My time has come. My time has come. Let me show y'all something. My scalp is on fire because as I'm combing, I'm talking about a wide tooth comb, y'all. It was coming out in clumps. I walk up like this. I walk up like this. We flawless. Ladies, tell them I walk up like this. I walk up like this. We flawless. Hello, everyone. I am Cerebral, and this is Cerebral Talks TV. I am not happy to have to share these videos with you about what is going on. Okay, black women are coming out on on all on TikTok with the videos showing their hair before and after. And they're saying that the hair products, Miel, 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 okay, the hair products, the oil, the rosemary oil and more is taking their hair out. Now, I always supported Monique Rodriguez. As you can see on the right, she is the founder of Miel Hair Products. Very, very popular. A lot of black women made her brand very famous. It was their top choice for hair oil, the shampoo and conditioner. As you can see on the left, she was endorsed and supported by a number of celebrities. We have Angel Reese, okay, the basketball player Angel Reese, promoting her hair hair growth oil. So what happened was on TikTok, a lot of white women and other races of women started using the rosemary oil, saying that it was also growing their hair. It was a big controversy about it because black women were saying this is more for curly and kinkier hair types. And her products became huge. She became extremely more successful. Her dream had came true. So what happened was she ended up partnering with a larger company that would help mass produce her products and it was not black owned. Black women got upset and said she sold out. I never felt that way because when you have a business, your dream is to have your business all over the stores everywhere and you need help. You need larger companies help that can market your product, make the commercials, mass production. She did it because more than likely it, she was over overloaded and needed more help that she just didn't have and she did what she did. And it was a business decision that would help her. And there were a lot of black women who said, oh no, it's gonna turn like Cantu products and a little bit, I think they say shea, shea moisture and stuff. Oh, the, the formula is gonna change now that she's making it for all women. And she said, no, the formula is not going to change. I'm still in charge of my company and I'm just getting more help now. Well, I am sad to say that a number of black women are making the video showing the before and after from using her products. This is even on uh, news articles now is coming out all about this. And I hate to see something like this because she worked so hard for her company and now it, it, it might honestly just be destroyed now. So I'm gonna share with you the video clips of what's going on. She was actually in court with some people. Okay, I'm gonna share video clips of black women showing their before and afters some updating you on what's going on, why they feel you shouldn't use her products. Also the topic if black women should even use hair oils. I'm also gonna show videos with that. But before I do, okay, this is one woman. She says this is what her hair looked like before and she used the products, okay? She used the Miel products. Okay, let's look at that again. So that's her hair before, okay? It's still somewhat short, but it's thicker, is fuller. So after she used the Miel products, she is now saying that this is her hair. Okay. She look how thin it is very thin now. And it's nothing like what it was before. Now at first, at first, when I saw some of this, I felt like, you know, can you always blame a person's products? Seriously, black women, a number suffer from anemia, hormonal problems, weight issues that affect hair imbalances, a lot of hair loss and your hair shedding and thinning 
can be due to a lot of health issues and what you eat, lack of water. It's a lot of things that happen. But the fact is, is that if they were only using her products, they were only using her products and their hair was in a healthy state and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse after using her products. What what can I say? I mean, she has been sued with, with some of this going on and um, there are mixed reactions. Some people feel like, well, can you really blame her? Maybe it's something going on with you. But a number of them are saying, I thought it was just me. My hair started coming out in clumps and everything like that. So I'm gonna be quiet right now and let me show you the videos of black women sharing their stories of what has happened to their hair. At this point, Monique Rodriguez, we're gonna need you to come to the front booth. I got this comment and it said, I thought it was just me. I will now get rid of all of it. My hair becomes dry, brittle, and falls out almost immediately. I've made excuses for it, but this is enough confirmation for me. Now, when I first brought this to the attention of the people, oh, they went crazy. And I think I speak for the culture when I say this. Why is it that so many people are suffering from scalp irritation, hair breakage, and hair loss with your products? Now, I know you see the people talking, so what I want to know is why haven't you came forward and made a statement? I posted this video two hours ago. We already at 10K, and everybody in the comments is saying the same thing. This woman only used it three times, and she started having hair breakage, okay? She used it. She said it made her hair very dry, okay? She went back to her old faithful castor oil, all right? This is not a game. Go ahead and take a stroll through the comment section. Check out part seven on my series and go through that comment section. It's the integrity for me, not a statement, not a I'm sorry, not a let's look into it, but everybody is experiencing the same things with your products. This should not be the result of someone using your shampoo from a million dollar hair brand. So the people wanna know because. Y'all, if I go bald, it's because it is stuck. My time has come. My time has come. Let me show y'all something. I swear to God, I've been waiting on this. Okay, so follow me here. This is what my hair normally looks like. Natural, and I usually wear it curly. I don't really like straightening my hair, whatever. Here is another example. This is just to show it when it's out, not up. And this as well, as you can see, very curly, very full. You could see at the bottom, there was no breakage. It was really healthy. Now, follow me. Now, before I show y'all the results, this is the product that I use along with the drops that the previous girl posted, this shampoo and this conditioner, this expensive ass shampoo conditioner at that. But just look at what it did to my hair. As you can see, I went to blow dry my hair to get my hair braided. And look at the result. It doesn't, I, it, I feel like it's not given here. So you need to see more angles. But you can see it's basically see-through on one side. And if you think that is dramatic, look at this. Just look, you can literally see through my hair, right? Now this, this is the kicker. Look at this. My hair is chopped at the front, long in the middle, and chopped at the back. My hair was literally breaking off piece by piece for me to get this backwards staircase. I don't even know what the fuck you call it. Look at this. I was so pissed. I had to cut my hair all the way across to match it all the way around. So if y'all needed a sign not to use any more Miel products, don't do it. It's not worth it. Speaking of businesses, I want to take the time right now to share the spotlight on this amazing company. This is Kylie's Lemonade. And she started her company at just 11 years old. And I don't know about you, but I absolutely love lemonade. And this is amazing. Her lemonade is in several stores, but you can also purchase her lemonade online so this is really great to see go to kylieslemonade.com you see up top 
the website, okay, right there to go check out her, her products. And I love it. She has her original lemonade, her pink lemonade, and her strawberry lemonade. And you can also get the variety pack, six of them. Okay, so her, her lemonade is $10.99. The variety pack is $21.99. This is a great deal. And I absolutely love to see it. Check her out, kylieslemonade.com. At this point, we just need 20 more comments to get this class action suit going. Because this right here, when over 7,000 comments are of women saying that they have the same problem using this product right here made by this woman, this is a problem. Let me talk to y'all for a second because this is just bigger than just TikTok. Okay, because at first I'm just bringing information, just sharing information. Never have I ever seen so many people suffering from the same condition because of one product. And then what really got to me today is that people are sending me pictures of their babies with scalp abrasions, with bald spots like no follicle in sight. At a time where we're teaching our young queens to love their hair at a time when we're teaching our young queens to be confident in themselves you know we're trying to use natural products because that's what we're trying to instill in them and we come across a product and we're putting it in our baby's hair and now not only adults are suffering but our babies our babies are suffering hair loss happens yes it does at a certain point in time it does happen there's alopecia there's you know, people go through treatments, chemo, hair loss happens. But when hair loss happens from a product and the owner of that product has no integrity to even come and show her face on any app to make a public statement or a public apology or to at least let the community know that they're looking into it, for me, it's just mind boggling. Now I am involved. I am heavily invested into some type of justice for these victims. I don't know what we gonna have to do, but we gotta make some type of noise. We gotta, we making noise, but we gotta make more noise. Click on this video, scroll through those comments. I'm not telling no lies. Scroll through the comments and see the similarities of the experiences that people are going through. People have developed dermatitis, psoriasis, People are suffering from migraines. They're suffering from scalp inflammation, scalp irritation, to the point where they're getting abrasions. This product is literally burning people's scalp and destroying the hair follicle. And once a hair follicle is destroyed, there's no way it can grow back. We need to take action. And I don't know who, or how or what, but something needs to be done. If there are any lawyers that come across this on your FYP, please jump in the comments, stitch this video, duet this video. What could we do? Because this is just, it's not one or two people, okay? And that's just the people on this app. Could you imagine the people who are not on social media, who do not know that Mayel is no longer black owned? who do not know that there are thousands of other people going through the same thing. There were women blaming this on postpartum. There were women blaming themselves for not taking care of themselves or this is y'all. I created a private group on Facebook. And I also created a beauty box discord. Both links are in my bio. Join me there if you have suffered from Myel Organics, any type of hair loss, scalp irritation, any type of skin condition from that rosemary mint oil. Meet me there. Because we have work to do. I would like to just say like a little bit more about like my hair right now, right? And what I'm feeling because my scalp is on fire. I know that if I was like to part it down the middle, it'd be super fucking red. And I know that it's swollen. Like my scalp is swollen. Um, this ponytail hurts. Um, and I didn't use the, I used the oil about two weeks ago. 
I haven't used it again since then. The only thing I used on my head today was the shampoo. I didn't even make it to the conditioner because as I'm combing, I'm talking about a wide tooth comb, y'all. I'm talking about, you know, the big African wide. It was coming out in clumps. I'm scared to part my hair because I know I'm missing patches. There's no other explanation as the only thing I changed was they had the Mayel on sale at the HEB here in Texas that I'm living at. You see where I'm at? <laughs> okay. Um, and I bought it because I see all the celebrities acting like their hair is growing. And this shit is, this stuff is taking your hair out. My scalp right now, y'all, so on fire. I can't even itch my head. It's so irritated and sensitive. I wouldn't give a damn which product you use. Me, as a former cosmetologist, I would throw all of it away. Because I've never in my life, this is the first time I brought a drugstore brand. Like where you can go pick up at any Walgreens. This is the first time. I usually use professional products because I, st I still have the ability to go to the professional stores and get professional products. But I had ran out and HEB is right next to my, you know what I'm saying? Right next to my place. And so I, j I didn't think that it would cost me my damn hair. I don't know when the scalp is going to go back to normal, but um, I picked up my self rate like I told y'all. and um, But my scalp is on fire. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, it, it's on fire. And I'm talking about, you know how you cut chunks? Like, if you was to, like, go up here to the root and cut it out? That's what it looked like. It was like it was coming out. So, I'm not making it up. My scalp is on fire right now. And um, luckily, I know how to get my hair to grow. So I'm not super, super, super disappointed, but I wanted to put the message out the message out there for other people who may be using this product. Y'all can use it at y'all own risk. But I don't give a damn what nobody say. I don't know if they like I don't know if they're using a heavy level of alkaline or whatever, but your hair is made of keratin. And you would think that I was combing through my hair with nair. Or Veet. Or any kind of hair removal product. Okay. I had less hair come out when I was getting relaxers back in the day. Less hair came out with the alkaline relaxers. Than what the f been coming out of my hair every week. And I'm not saying I wash my hair every week. But every time I take down a protective style that I always wear... I've always worn protective style since I've been natural. I've never had this problem. A little shedding, yeah, I understand that. Clumps of my hair falling out. Thank God I got a man that love me. Cause, cause listen, listen, Linda, listen, Linda. So at your own risk. So I just wanted to update cause I've been seeing everybody post who've been posting or reposting their shit. I get y'all sharing it and y'all should, but whoever's using them products, at your own risk. I, if it was up to me, as a former cosmetologist, it's my fault 100% because I did not do my research um, on this product. I just always seen good reviews on it, but I did not go and do my own research, and I probably would have saw that and would have said, hell no, nah, because all it takes is one person to tell me that they hair falling out. It don't take it don't take 10. It just take one. Because shampoo don't take your fucking hair out. For the people in the comments talking about y'all just using the products wrong. Shampoo don't take your hair out. I just shampooed my hair. I didn't even get to the conditioner or the damn oil yet. Shampoo took my hair up. Something's wrong, Cletus. And I can laugh about it because, like I said, I know how to get my hair to grow back. And I have eczema. So when my scalp is inflamed, I know when I'm allergic to something. Uh, but this is a different level. It has also caused me crazy amount of headaches. Not only has my hair been falling out, the headaches have been insane. I have, I've never been a migraine girl. I'm super healthy, that kind of situation. I don't get headaches. But my headaches has been going because my, my scalp is on fire. So at your own risk, if you decide to use a product, to each his own. But as for me and my house, 
I threw that shit outside in the dumpster. Did. Oil does not grow hair. This is a scam. The way that you grow hair is by taking care of your scalp is by making sure that your scalp is being properly cleansed with a good shampoo that your hair is being moisturized by a good conditioner the curly hair routine really can be simplified to a shampoo conditioner and a gel you know what i mean this was shampoo conditioned and i used gel to style five days ago when have big corporations cared about us they have poisoned our food supply you think they're not going to poison the hair care Moisturize your scalp and stop listening to every video on TikTok to tell you not to do so. People are telling you to spray water on your hair shaft because scientifically it's supposed to help moisturize your hair and get the, the nutrients in your hair shaft. Stop listening to people like that. Please don't come for me. I'm about to sound real elementary, but it's only because that's the only way you understand it. If you're black, you need to put oil in your hair. Okay, period, point blank. You need to moisturize your scalp, period. Your, your scalp produces oil but it doesn't produce enough to get from the top of your hair shaft to the bottom of your hair shaft somebody who is quote unquote white to you yt quote unquote have good hair to you um their hair produces a lot more oils than black people because their hair their scalp produces oil and it goes from the top of their hair shaft all the way to the bottom because their hair is straight your hair is not straight your hair is curly or it's kinky curly or it's coarse so the hair uh i mean the oil that grows on your scalp doesn't all the way go it doesn't go all the way down to the hair shaft. So this is why us people of color, black people, have to moisturize your scalp. You have to moisturize it, okay? This is what I learned in beauty school. I've been moisturizing my scalp, my client's scalps. Our hair has been growing. Hair has been healthy. Hair has been um, getting hydrated. Um, also, shampoo and conditioner is really important, especially like clarifying shampoo when you want to strip all the minerals out your hair, uh, like all the dirt and buildup and oils, and then deposit moisture inside of it. But you don't want to use clarifying, clarifying shampoo all the time. But if you are black, you need to moisturize your scalp. I don't know who is telling black people to do this, but I feel like they don't like you if you're actually doing it and you're listening to them. No, you need to moisturize your scalp. You also need to wash your hair, not every day, not every week, but you need to make sure that you wash your hair and treat your hair. I put a lot of natural stuff in my hair. I make my own hair oils. I'll be selling it soon. Um, I put a lot of food products in my hair because that's what makes my hair grow. And when you think about it, before we had all these chemicals, we had stuff from the earth. So. Please moisturize your scalp. Stop listening to people. If you gotta get desperate and put grease on your scalp because it's dry, please do so. Water is not gonna do it for you, okay? And it may do it for some, but not everybody, not the majority, okay? Stop listening to these people who are telling you to put water only in your hair and stop putting oil. Them people are crazy and they need to be reported on TikTok, period. One thing I will say is my hair has absolutely been thriving since I stopped using Miel products. And a lot of people don't talk about it, but I'm gonna talk about it. So I don't know if it was my fault for using Mio products for the type of curly hair that I have. I don't know if it's intended for only like a like a more coily type of hair. Because I do have a loose curl. But I noticed every wash day my hair was falling out. It was breaking, shedding like crazy. And I did not know why. Like I had no idea why. Because it was breaking and shedding so bad to the point where I thought I was going to have to cut all my hair off. Like literally. I wish I had pictures to prove it which I really wish I did, but I was literally so discouraged. Like, I didn't even take pictures of it. It was literally so bad. My hair was thinning out so bad. But I decided to try this Cream of Nature brand. And I feel like Cream of Nature is like a hair brand that people look over. But no, y'all, the Cream of Nature Pure Honey line, every single thing from it has helped my hair so much. I know my hair looks crazy right now because it's literally going on like two weeks since I washed it. But, like, y'all, my hair has grown so much. It's not breaking. It's not shedding. Definitely recommend this line. If you're having, like, the same issues, try it. You won't. You won't regret it. Y'all remember when I told y'all not to use Miel hair product? This is why. This is from... It's Sunday. But I'm going to get into it. I want everyone to stop blaming things on a product that they have not been able to properly test what else could potentially be wrong with them. Hair falling out like that in clumps could be a sign of a health issue. It could be a sign of improper product use. It could be a sign of you're using the wrong detangler, and a lot of you are. But everyone wants to blame the one hair product that they potentially could be using that might have a little bit of active or a tingle to say that this is the reason why their hair is falling out. 
explaining to black women or any woman of color really that these scales that the doctors have to measure your vitamin levels how well your iron's doing your 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 vitamin d's your everything your potassium all of this is based off of a system designed to cater to only one type of person it's not about us and we have to start realizing that focusing our brains on what our bodies feel like uh, during a week, as opposed to what the doctor says a number should be, our lives would be a lot better. Furthermore, I've had to wean so many of you girls off of these brushes that are literally ripping your hair out during your detangle process and you don't even want to accept it. You're like, oh my God, it's taking me hours to detangle. Oh my God, my hair. Oh my God, my hair. There's only one detangler I've been using for the last 10 years. And when I show people how much shedding they have in my sink, they're always astonished and it's a tangle teaser. I don't care who comes out with what brush. I don't care who comes out with what comb, a uncomb, a non-comb, a two comb. I'm not using it. And stop using these shampoo combs when your hair is a coil. Them shampoo combs are going to rip your hair out if you don't do it properly. I can do it because I can see over your head. You cannot do it because you cannot see over your head. And the sooner you invest in a, a tangle teaser to get those small kinks out, it'll be a lot better for you. Another thing. Y'all are the problem when it comes to these products. None of you, and I mean, I'm going to say a good 75% of you, still do not shampoo your hair enough. You are not using clarifying shampoo. You are not scrubbing your scalp. You are not exfoliating. You are not making sure that dead skin is off of your scalp. And you are layering layers of oil and oil and oil and oil on top of your head and wondering why your hair is shedding and wondering why it's burning when you flat iron it. Oil is a conductor to cook things. When you fry chicken, you fry it in oil. So when you have oil residue left on your hair and you go to put a flat iron or a hot comb on it, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? Buildup is making y'all hair shed. Y'all are not washing y'all hair enough and then complaining about shedding. Your scalp is an extension of your skin. This is skin here. This is an extension of your face. Would you go a whole month without washing your face? No, right? Because your face would look crazy. What the hell do you think is happening up here? <laughs> then, when I explain this to you guys that you need to wash your hair more, you're like, oh, it's so much work. Do you know how much easier your hair would be to take care of if you just took the time to wash it more frequently? Your hair would literally do what you wanted to do. All the things that you're complaining about. Oh, I don't see my curls like that. Oh, my scalp is always bugging out. Oh, my scalp is this. Go to a dermatologist. See if you have a scalp condition. Get a medicated shampoo because scalp conditions also lead to further shedding and hair loss. If you, Especially if you have contact a, a dermatitis or seborrheic dermatitis, any type of dermatitis that you let sit on your scalp for too long, you're suffocating your follicles. You need medicated shampoo. You may need a topical oil or foam. And you need to be washing your hair more frequently. It is literally a part of our hair care system to wash clients' hair and shampoo clients' hair. We have to start there. I don't touch anybody's head because I don't trust y'all to wash y'all head. When I tell people that they need to shampoo their hair a minimum of three times, I've seen jaws drop. Because you think two shampoos are going to do it? No, it's not. It's not doing it. Your scalp is tired. It is exhausted. It is suffocating. Y'all are suffocating it with all of these damn products and all these heavy oils and all of these creams and all of these things that you're putting directly on the scalp when most of it is only designed for the hair. And, you know, my clients that know me or that are on this app, they know I come from a place of love and patience for the first three appointments. Once you show me that you cannot adhere to the program is when I start talking like this. And it's still out of love. Because I want to see you do better. I don't want to see you crying and complaining that you feel like you're insecure and that your edges and you can't go outside because you feel like your hairline is thin. Like it breaks my heart to know that there's some women who feel like they cannot wear their hair because they're not in love with their hair because they're so attached to covering it and not caring about it. Y'all have to do better. Y'all, I really, for this year, I want more women to focus on actually cleaning their scalp. And if I see another video about co-washing, I'm going to lose my mind. Co-washing was the reason why y'all thought Diva Curl was making everybody's hair fall out. I'm just going to be the person to say it. A lot of y'all were like, Diva Curl this and Diva Curl that, my hair shedding. Because half of y'all don't shampoo your scalps. And it sends your hair into a shedding phase. There are three phases of hair growth. And that's one of the main things that'll do it. So the things that I need us to take away from this talk. Get a better detangler. Shampoo your hair more frequently. Take your vitamins. A lot of them, especially around your menstrual. And definitely stop using so much goddamn oil. 
get it off first and then you could put some more on since y'all are so obsessed with oiling your scalps bye merry christmas <gasps> oh my gosh she's bald she's bald and she's torturing people who have hair so this is a picture of me and my niece thank you sissy for sending me this picture this is what my hair actually is this luscious 3c 3b hair and when i tell you for the life of me i cannot get a curl or I, first of all let's talk about the fact that i literally have no hair none okay so just to give you a side by side as to the fact that i'm not delusional when it comes to this I didn't even realize this until yesterday that there were so many of us who are suffering, not just adults, children who are irritated scalp, bald spots, okay, like irreversible damage to the hair. Yeah. To see all of these videos about Miel's products and how a lot of women's hair have been falling out, I think I have finally solved my hair issue. I hope I have, but I'm really pissed off and I want to be involved in this lawsuit because I'm about to tell y'all what I've gone through this past year when it comes to my hair. So ever since December, I have been noticing that my hair is falling out in clumps and the top part of my hair has been extremely thin. Even my edges was like non-existent a little bit and i'm just like what's going on with my hair so the first thing i did was i went to a hair specialist i paid over 300 dollars for her to examine my head and take a look at my scalp and all this just for her to tell me to put minoxidil on it honestly i felt like that was a temporary you know a temporary fix and so i wanted to see what was going on with me internally so i went to a herbalist the herbalist tells me because i'm abstinent and i'm almost 40 that I guess I'm like training my body to say I'm not going to have kids. Therefore, my hormone levels are off and that's causing my hair to fall out. So I went to the doctor to go get my hormone levels checked. So the dermatologist, you know, she doesn't find anything wrong. She thought it was like something with my thyroids that came back fine. So she's just like, mm, maybe minoxidil won't be so bad. But I'm like, something is wrong internally. Something is wrong. And nobody can tell me what's going on. But all this time, I am using Myel's products. Then to top it off, I had to go from wearing my hair natural to wearing wigs and, and weaves so I wouldn't touch my hair. I'm thinking maybe I'm manipulating it too much. So let me just leave it alone. Y'all, I can't stand wearing wigs because it feels like a freaking helmet is on my head. But I was like putting up with it because I was like thinking that this would help my hair grow back. But you can kind of see the edges right now and I could barely add that much hair to the top part of my hair. So my hair looks extremely full in the back with the braids and I tried to like fill it in as much as I could, but it's thin up here and I'm just sick to my stomach because nothing has helped and now I'm finding out about my L and I'm just pissed. So of course I'm going to try a different product. Um, if you guys want to recommend something please help me out i'm willing to try anything because my hair is still falling out but i'm going to stop using their products and try something for the next couple of months and if my hair starts growing back best believe i'm coming for that ass best believe i'm coming for that lawsuit sign me up because i want my money for pain and suffering 10 side effects that people experience from using myel organic let's get it Let's get up in these comments. So I'm gonna make myself small. We're gonna start at the top. Mrs. said, I tried to tell people, made my scalp burn for days, sores on the scalp, hair loss. I stopped using immediately and my hair is recovering with minoxidil. Unique Me said, this product also took my hair out and I can see clumps of hair going down the drain whenever I wash with shampoo. I think clumps of hair was the most common phrase in this post. Then we have, Girl, that's Coco. She said, this happened to my sister. We tracked it back to this damn oil. She also suffered from dermatitis shaking my head. Lex came in and said, this oil gave me really bad headaches. Someone else in the comments was saying that they were suffering from migraines and they never got migraines before. So I stopped using it after two days. After seeing this, I'm glad I stopped. Doc Kim said, I've been having scalp irritation. There were people that were saying that their scalp was inflamed, bleeding. I thought it was from the braids. 
I literally just washed my hair and it's itching already. You gotta stop using that product, but don't run. Hold up, we got more. You already here, you might as well stay. This one says I used it and I noticed my hair was dry and breaking horribly. I developed psoriasis. I would comb my hair and handfuls of hair would come out. Same for my daughters, I'm livid. Ash said, this makes so much sense. I'm wearing a new hairstyle and thought it was the hair causing the irritation. My scalp was literally raw. Okay, raw. My spouse developed itchy scalp after using this, all right? She said, this gave me a chemical burn. Now, if you know a chemical burn, if you ever had a relaxer that sat too long, yeah, that, that's a, a chemical burn. Love Life, Love Life said, ugh, I used the oil and got scabs, literal scabs. I thought maybe my hair wasn't thick enough. It's wavy and thin. Silly me. Unique me. Oh, I think I already put that. Let me bring y'all the 10th side effect. I lost that 10th comment, but it was something about dermatitis. Like people were over here going to the dermatologist, okay? Thinking that they were going through menopause or that they were sick. People were actually thinking that they were sick. Anyway, I made this post for y'all in the comments who are saying that, oh, you're not using it right. Oh my God, you're using too much. No, it's more than one person. It's more than 10 people. It is over 10,000 people who are sharing the same story. So go to the top of my profile, check out that pin post, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Someone needs to fact check the Miel scandal, okay? I need to know if this is true. If you're unaware, the Miel Rosemary Growth Oil that was going viral last year for making your hair grow is supposedly making your hair fall out and I need to know because I was convinced I was losing hair and I was using that product. I went to doctors, like I went to therapy. I literally thought my hair was falling out and I couldn't believe when I saw my TikTok review page that it was happening to people that were using the Rosemary Growth Oil and I kid you not, I was using that as a pre-shower in braids. Like, please tell me this is a lie. I literally stopped using it only because my trichologist gave me something to use for hair but I need to know if this is real because I just feel like I can't trust any like brands anymore like how is that real there's no way that a product that is supposed to make your hair grow is making your hair fall out okay please fact check I need to know what the girlies the curly girls are thinking I made two videos explaining why I do not use oil on my hair anymore and y'all are very upset I don't think I ever really explained why I stopped using oils. I think I was just telling y'all why you should stop. <laughs> I have psoriasis on my feet and I also eventually got it on my scalp. And while I was doing my hair throughout my hair journey, I learned that oil was probably like the best thing to put on your hair. So obviously I was dunking my hair in oil 24 fucking seven. So I would go into the beauty supply store and the first thing I would see for oil would be those little green bottles in the beauty supply store. And I would also get the wild growth hair. I tried all the oils you could possibly imagine, all the flavors, all the colors. You know what I'm saying? I bought every single one and I would put all of that shit in my hair. I would be drying my scalp in that. And over time I noticed like, oh my God, my scalp is becoming so itchy. My actual psoriasis on my scalp is getting worse. Um, not even washing my hair would get the flakes away. Like it would just become worse and worse and worse. On top of me having a psoriasis, flare up on top of my scalp i realized that my hair wasn't being penetrated by water or products anymore i couldn't really see my curl pattern which was like a big deal for me because i honestly thought like my hair is getting damaged even though i haven't straightened my hair in so long um i realized that my hair would collect like lint y'all know when you're like little kids and like you would take the bobberettes off and you would see like like little lint i don't know if y'all remember but i do it'd be like lint after you take now, that's what would happen to me and it's like i'm in a big ass age right now I've never seen lint in my hair until I was like younger. So why am I seeing it now? So over time, I was changing my products. And I just thought to myself, why do I use oil? Like I, I came to a, I sat back and I came to a groundbreaking discovery. Like why do I use oil in my hair? So there wasn't actually a set date or set time that I just stopped using oil. I think over time it just stopped becoming a priority in my hair care routine. And it just, you know... And the more I like invested into products and started really realizing like, oh shit, where did I learn to put oil in my hair from anyways? Which, you know, we learned from our family, from our family members. You really, we learned heavily from YouTube. That LOC method is where I learned how to put oil in my hair in the first place, especially on my hair strands. We've all been through it. That's why I collectively made a video because we've all collectively watched those videos and this is about time we update the natural hair community and tell y'all we don't have to use oil on our hair anymore specifically because the shampoos that we have are now hydrating they're not like how they used to be back then back then they were very stripping to get rid of the oil 
now they aren't they're very hydrating because we don't need oil anymore i don't know who needs to break it to you if you still want to use oils by all means necessary use them i just recommend to not use the ones from the hair beauty supply anymore because they're full of fragrances and they're not soluble at all if you do switch to soluble hair oils that's it don't be mad at me I have a few things to say about the Mayo hair loss controversy, but first and most importantly, if you notice any type of irritation, burning, or stinging sensation from using a shampoo, stop using it. A little tingling is fine, but if it causes a warming reaction and it's not supposed to, stop. Because shampoos don't usually cause hair loss, they can cause hair breakage if it's too dry or brittle, but hair loss is usually more systemic like something related to your diet. And if you notice your hair falling out more than usual, first thing you should try is switching out your shampoo. If it stops, it's probably related to the shampoo irritating your scalp. But if it persists, it might be time to schedule an appointment with a doctor. But back to the matter at hand, a lot of people are attributing hair loss from Mayel to the P&G acquisition from back in January 2023. But I don't think the associated hair loss has anything to do with the P&G acquisition or a formula change. Because the formula has changed very little, if at all. Here's the Rosemary Men ingredient list from 2022. And here it is now. The ingredients are the exact same. Here are the ingredients for the Rosemary Men shampoo from 2020. And here it is today. The ratios might have been tweaked because the order is different below the 1% line. But that could have also been a marketing change. Either way, the ingredients are the exact same. But what everybody should know is that all versions of the Mayo formula contain potential irritants. Essential oils in them themselves are irritating. Rosemary oil, peppermint oil, eucalyptus oil. Plus there's also menthol and benzoyl nicotinate, which were added to give you that cooling sensation but can be very irritating for some people. So as I said in the beginning, if you notice any type of shedding or irritation from using a shampoo, please discontinue use. Please be observant. Don't let it be a year before you realize something's wrong with your hair. To a lawsuit that was filed before Mayel sold out to Procter & Gamble in 2022. This lawsuit was filed by Garcia et al. Et al is like an abbreviation. It's like from a Latin word that means and others. And they came after Mayel Organics. Listen, they did not come to play because they came not only for the company, they also came for her personally. And these are the plaintiffs, which are the parties involved. Five people came for this lawsuit, okay? Y'all can go ahead and pause to read. Now, this was originally filed February of 22, but as you can see, in October of 2022, there was a Zoom settlement conference held. The judges, everybody was there, and look at this. There was a settlement achieved. Now, I don't know how much money was done in this settlement, but I know she got it, and I know Procter & Gamble got it, so anything to keep their mouth shut, right? Now, it had to be a substantial amount of money because come December of 2022, it was dismissed with prejudice. Now, if y'all want to know what dismiss with prejudice mean, it says that it's permanently dismissed. That no matter the circumstances, no matter how much more hair you lose, if a case is dismissed with prejudice, it cannot be brought back to court. Like the case is done. Wow. So this is how we do it. We just shut them up, right? And keep it moving. January of 2023, the company was sold. And this was just one case, okay? Let me know in the comments what y'all think about this. The girls are finally talking about Maya. So if you haven't heard, there's been like an influx of videos about people who use Maya or Miel um, hair products and are now saying, hey, like my hair is falling out from these products. The company recently did sell, I believe, and people are kind of like connecting to that. Like, oh, they changed the formula, this, this and that. But for me, I've actually experienced this whole hair falling out from their products before they sold. It used to be a big Mayel Mia. I still don't know how to say their name properly. That doesn't matter. I still used to be like a big, I used to be a big fan of their products. And two years ago, um, they had like, you know, they had their like annual Black Friday sale where I swear like everything's like $5, whatever. And I specifically bought the Rosemary line. And I think it's like the pomegranate one, the one that comes with the pink bottle. And I remember buying a, the deep conditioner, conditioner, and some styling cream in the rosemary line, and then the pink um, one for the shampoo. And I remember consistently using that. Like, that was all that I would use. At the time, my hair was, like, kind of shoulder length, a little bit past my shoulders, and it was very even. This is the most part, important part. My hair was very even. Over time, after using those products, I noticed every time I was in the shower, just my hair was just shedding. And just shedding and just falling out. And every time I would get out the shower, like on the shower floor, like my hair is just there. And I'm like, why is there so much hair? So eventually I did, of course, like link it back. I'm like, okay, I'm using these new products. I don't know what the heck is going on. So 
completely stopped, decided to kind of blow dry my hair, press my hair, and see what the heck is going on. Like I told you, shoulder length, very even hair. After I did that, the crown of my hair, so the crown, it would kind of reach like around here maybe, it broke off to the point where it was above my eyebrow. And I'm like, hold on, like what is going on? So like me, I like I panicked, but I like I said linked it to the new products, and I was like, I'm not using these anymore. And luckily at the time, I was able to switch, and I started using Olaplex. Um, and Olaplex is a little bit pricey, but after I had switched to them, because at that point my hair is damaged, hair is breaking off, it's dry, brittle. I don't know what the heck is going on. I switched to Olaplex and my hair like for, I think I used it for about four weeks. I got like a trial kit. So I think it was like good for a month. Used it for a month. My hair basically was good. Like anytime I went to the shower to wash it, honestly little to almost no hair shedding. And I was like, what did Mayel do to their product? Some people think like, oh, rosemary, like you can be allergic to rosemary. There are people like, oh yeah, you can be allergic if you have scalp issues, whatever. But it's just the fact that other people are also saying this too, like, hey, I use the Rosemary line or even any of their other products. And they're saying, yeah, my hair also fell out. So I think this whole thing is crazy, um, but I'm glad that the girlies are speaking out. The amount of people that I had to block for coming in the comments section with this energy. She said, it looks like she just took out some braids and combed out the dead hair. As a licensed cosmetologist, this should not be happening every single time you wash your hair. This is just a public service announcement that if you're coming in the comment section with this energy, you're gonna get blocked. The way I have to filter through these comments because I'm trying to create a safe space for these victims. I had someone come in the comments and say, they're not using the product correctly. You're supposed to use a carrier oil. Well, if that was the case, you know where that should have been listed? Right here in the direction. And it clearly does not say mix with a carrier oil. It literally says section the hair into four parts and put a small amount onto the scalp and massage it in. It doesn't say mix it with coconut oil or carrier oil. It should have been listed here if that was the case. Do not come into the comment section and try to discredit the experience that any of these women have had. If that was not the experience that you had, then fine, keep scrolling. But don't come in here and try to advocate for this brand or tell people that they're using the product correctly like you were in the lab. We got some work to do on the back end. So if you did have any experiences with Maya Organics, I'm gonna tell you what to do. Head over to the top of my profile and I want you to click on this link right here. Once you click on this link, it's gonna bring you directly to my link tree. If you guys are looking for black owned, Kalita Natural Crayon Essence is what I use, so I have the links there. But go ahead and click on this Beauty Box Discord server. It's gonna take you directly to my Beauty Box Discord and I want you to accept the invite and meet me there. Well, 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 what do we have here? Is that Mayel Organics um, as a defendant? <laughs> Monique Rodriguez, oh, so you thought that you was going to sell us a product, right? Turn around, sell that company to a larger company, let them tweak it, have our hair falling out, and you thought that you was really going to get away with it. Oh, no, no, no. Come to the front. Who is this from? Cliffwood Law Firm. Okay. Wow. All of her locations? Got a notice of violation against Mayel Organics and Procter & Gamble Beauty? <gasps> For what product? <gasps> the straightening shampoo? Oh, what? what is that? A, a cancer-causing chemical? <gasps> oh no. What violation might you ask? Are you in violation of Proposition 65? It requires that a clear and reasonable warning is provided with these products regarding the exposures of cancer-causing chemicals. <gasps> oh, cancel culture? We have some unpacking to do. We are going to dissect this docket page by page. Like this post, share it, repost it, turn your notifications on because we got work to do. <laughs> but Tam, don't you sell hair care products? Yes. And as the founder behind Jim and Henry, 
I have to tell the truth. I am sick. I'm sick of the BS. I get messages all the time. Oh my God, I used rosemary oil on, the, on my scalp and it actually caused burns. Oh, I thought it was supposed to make my hair grow. Okay. Oil doesn't make your hair grow. That's not true. Your hormones, your sleep pattern, the fact that you're eating enough helps your hair grow. I mean, that's science. Google it yourself. That is literally the science. That's how our bodies evolve. That's what they're supposed to do. When your hair is in the anagen phase, the growth phase, hey, it's because your body is functioning at the normal level. Products highlight your curl pattern, provide moisture, soften your hair, give your hair the bounce your hair is dry the last thing you need is oil i told y'all hair growth and hair health begins with hydration oil does not grow hair consider the conditioner made with hyaluronic acid from ueda skin made with hyaluronic acid to penetrate hair shaft and scalp proving hair health hair growth and hydration all right so i thank you so much for joining me it's sad to see this happen this woman has built an empire and I don't know. She said she wouldn't change the formula. I didn't see anyone complaining before that their hair was coming out. Now this is what's going on. They're saying this and other people feel differently. Like, can you really prove it is her products? Is it something you're doing? It, do you have a health problem? Um, did you have any, I mean, things like this does happen, but look, I showed the videos and I did have one of her products, but I don't use her products a lot. So I can't say that her, her product has, you know, no, you know, so a number of women do have health issues, which is why hair sheds and you have these issues, but things like this does happen. I don't know if they change something in the formula. You know, someone said, why don't you test the formula to see what's in it before you say these things and others are like, nope is definitely something wrong here. I just, I'd, I hate to have to see this happen to her. We shall see. I'm sure more videos are going to be made, but also don't forget the other black women who do have uh, companies with their own shampoos and conditioners and oils. I've shared some of them before and it's something I wanna do in the future. And I just wanted to share this story with you. We shall see what happens to her company. Okay, so let me know what you think in the comment section below about all of this. Thank you so much again for joining me. I greatly appreciate you all. Please hit the bell and click all notifications if you decide to subscribe so you know when I'm live and when I upload. Bye everyone.